you lads, you lovelies, you everyone in between. So today I've got a little tutorial video for you. And this is going to show you how to use B Haptics, or at least the vest, with a VR chat avatar. And in particular, I'm going to show you how to use these together without your avatar performance being completely destroyed. So I'm going to show you what happens and what's going on and how to fix it. So this is actually not a tutorial on say how to use Unity or find an avatar or anything like that. This is just for getting that B Haptics vest working nicely in VR chat. The rest of the stuff, you're better off finding dedicated videos to that subject. First thing is we have our avatar loaded and ready to edit. What we want to do is get the B Haptics stuff imported. So here's what we're going to do. We need two things, the B Haptics actual Unity file, and then a requirement for that, a dependency, that is animator as code. And we need to import that. That's our first thing. Animator as code right here. We just open up the zip file and then we drag the contents. Don't drag the whole zip file in. I'll, I did that once. Now it's very confused until I realized that's being silly. So just drag the contents of the zip file into assets. So right here, assets. And then drag it into here. And then I'll import. It only takes a second or so. Once we have that installed, we can import the B haptic stuff itself. So we go to assets, import package. Most of you already know about this. And then we would select our B haptic stuff here. Like so. And then we got this. It's all just fine by default. So we click import. And then we wait for it to import. Okay, once that's done importing, it didn't take too long. We can select our avatar just up here, scroll down and select add component. And here we go, B Haptics OSC integration. Click, scroll down a bit, and this shows all the components we potentially could use. I'm just going to cover the vest, but anything else you might have you would be able to do some of these tricks within the limitations of what we have to work with here. I'm just going to show the vest. That's all I use personally, despite the fact that I own a ton of this stuff. But for now, just a vest. So we add the device and look, bing, right there, a gigantic vest on our avatar. Now we want to sort of shape this to the size of our actual avatar. You can tell this does not fit her very well. So we can just click on the vest and then move it around. We can adjust the scale. And this isn't necessarily important. If you want to configure this to get it fit just so, you know, this is where you would do it. Just try these different values until you find one that, you know, looks about right. Go with this and then go with one. So I'm not actually gonna sit here and fit this perfectly. It's it's not really important for this part of the video, but let's just say that actually does fit nicely. Just pretend I spent the time to get this fitted nicely. I'm not actually going to do it. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. So here's our vest. Now, so far, so good. That's really at this point, almost all we would be doing, but we have a problem. As you saw earlier, my performance on this model was excellent. Now, very poor. Don't worry about this, it'll go away later. But very poor. All of a sudden, our avatar that was once excellent has become the worst possible. Well, that stinks. And it's because of this, the contact component count. There we really have it. Now, if you're okay with your avatar being very poor, you're, you're pretty much done, honestly, you are. We just go here, click apply integration, and that's it. In fact, we can actually apply integration now. There we go. Done. See, easy as that. That's all you have to do for to get B Haptics working in its worst possible form. As you can see, that other message at the top disappeared. But we're still stuck with very poor. And yes, others will block this due to performance. 
Which is a shame because this was an excellent performance avatar, wasn't it? So what can we do to fix this? And that's really what this video is about. Now the Behaptics vest is sort of neat, but personally, I don't like it. So what we can do, you can actually just toggle them off here by selecting these two box 001 and object 019 and just click them off. And then you still have these indicators, these visual feedback indicators that will highlight when somebody does activate it. And you can just move these around as you wish to get it where you want them. You can apply any tilts or whatever. You know, this is just up to you to decide what you like best. I like it. It kind of looks like a science fiction energy shield. <laughs> but none of this really does a whole lot for us because we really do not want to have such terrible performance. Not on our carefully optimized model. It's no good. So what we really need to do here is modify the prefab. You can't modify it here, but if you push, say, a button to try to modify this prefab, it'll ask you if that's what you want to do. So say I want to uh, delete box 01. I can press delete on my keyboard, and it'll tell me I can't do that, but I can just edit the prefab. There's probably a better way to do that, but I don't actually know how to use Unity at all. So I click open prefab, and this is where we get to the meat, to the heart of the problem. So, I personally would just rather not have these. That's up to you. That is up to you. And if you are, say, very close to your materials and polygon count, as the usual model I actually run with is, it's just pressed right up against that limit. These actually push it over. But we want to get rid of them. So you can click on this. Just select nothing. And then the mesh. Get rid of it. We don't want it. Done like that. This will. You could actually probably just delete these as well. But for some reason, I like to do it like this. There we are. Now we're just left with the shields. Or I should say the dynamic touch feedback. And that can remove our material and polygon count if you're pressed right up against it. Same goes for something like the back motors. If these also take up. And again, in my usual avatar, I'm so close to that limit, I do actually have to remove these. But you don't, and this model has plenty of room to spare. So it's not something we actually have to do. So this is where the problem begins, is this area here. This is a real mess. It is a huge mess. So that's what's going on. This sort of tangled mess here is really quite inconvenient because it's duplicated. So I'll show you here. It's these ones for others and for yourself. So what I would suggest, and this is for front and back. So what I would suggest is to delete the others category. Just get rid of it. Highlight it. Press delete on the front. Delete on the back. Now I'm going to show you what's that done right there. So we're going to put this here so you can see. And then when we go back to the main editor, Update the com contact com component count is halved. It's down to 40. That's a pretty big deal. We're still too high and we're still very poor, but you can see what's going on now. Is they have pretty much made this the least efficient way you possibly could. Now, you're quite astute, dear viewer. So I'm sure it's occurred to you that now others can't touch your vest. No problem. It's just here. You select any one of these nodes. You can, you can see what's going on here. So there's our full front. And then we have our rows. So we have five rows of four nodes each. And then we have individual nodes. It's also worth noting that you can reposition these as you wish. So if you really want them to sort of conform to the shape of your avatar's body on a very fine level, this is where you would do that. You can just move these nodes around freely to fit it perfectly should you so desire. I don't think it's strictly necessary, but you might. And that's how you would do it. So we have to select the nodes and say allow others. And it's probably easier to just select, hold down shift and select a bunch, and then just do that at a time. It's a bit tedious, but welcome to VR chat. And that's what we would do. Do this for all of them. And then we also have to do that for the back, of course. 
There's a quicker way to do this. I wish I knew it. Now, here's a bit of a thing. There are compromises to getting this to work efficiently. Now, the others category also has in the collision tags, head and torso. So if somebody was to say walk through you, then it would activate the motors as it did so. Here, only something more deliberate, reaching out and touching you with hand, feet, fingers, whatever, will trigger it. Their body or head itself will not. And we do not want it to do that because if we have self tagged as and something that can activate it, we will always be touching those motors because it's us. So it will always count as a contact and those motors will just permanently stay on. And that's really not what we want. Alternatively, you could remove the self category and keep the allow others category and then make it so you cannot touch yourself. Phrasing, but you get what I'm saying. Those are your options. If you want to be able to trigger it yourself, this is how you do it. If you're okay with not triggering the haptics yourself, then you would remove the self category and then just keep this as it is. You wouldn't have to necessarily tweak this. Personally, I do like to be able to trigger my own haptics just so that I know they're working or something like that. I don't know. It's my preference. It might be yours. This is how you do it. It's really not complicated. To move on, our problem here is that we still have too many. So here are the numbers. So we have 40. That's all our motors. And that's way too many because this is maximum is 32. Here's the thing though. Say we remove, say, eight of the motors. That brings us to 32, but that still puts us at poor. And we would rather have, at least I would rather have something at least medium. That way you're not getting performance cut off. And at medium, you retain just about most of your haptics in, I think, a fairly good way. And I'll show you the pattern I use to be a bit clear. So just so you understand what's happening here. 32 takes us to poor, 24 will take us to average. And I think that's our sort of sweet spot. If you want to go down to good, then you can have 16. And then eight will retain you being excellent. However, you really don't have many haptic points. And even 16 can be a bit slim and medium is pretty good. That's sort of up to you if you want to remove them. I'll show you my pattern of nodes for 24. So we're still removing quite a number of nodes, but it's actually not going to be all that bad and probably something you won't even notice. I'll tell you, I haven't noticed the missing nodes because it's in a nice, balanced, clever pattern. So we're on the front still. We're going to keep the entire top row. So just remember what this looks like. There we are. So we can keep the top row and then on row two, we're going to delete these middle two. Whoops. We're going to do this in the prefab. Whoopsie daisy. There we go. <laughs> there, it took us right there. So we're going to remove the middle two from row two. Yoink. We can keep all of row three. Row four, we're also going to remove the middle two. And then on row five, I remove the outer two. And that removes six. So now our pattern looks like this. So there's only little gaps here and with these in the middle and then at the edges, you're unlikely to really notice much since you'll likely anyone touching you will probably be triggering multiple of these motors at once. So it won't be something that's very noticeable. In the back, we are a little bit more extreme. Here, I'll show you what we've done. Go back here. And you can see we're at 34, so we removed six. We want to keep removing more. Go back to our prefab editor and the back. Now the back is where we're going to remove the majority of these since it's less common for people to go fiddling around behind your back, I would think or hope, but it's up to you. It's VR chat. We're not here to judge. So we're going to move the first and fourth node. And then in row two, we're going to keep 
five and eight, so the middle two. And then in row three, the outer two. Row four, the inner two. And in row five, we're moving the outer two again. And here our pattern, now I'm sure you've picked up on this, is like this. So it's still f actually reasonably complete. And again, probably not something that would be super obvious that those aren't actually triggering. And you can tweak these patterns a little bit for your own needs and desires and what you like. Personally, this is what I like, and I think it still provides consistent flowing feedback. If someone was to say, brush their hand across you, it's still there. So what have we done? How far have we come? Let's have a look. And there we go. Look at that. We're at 24, and now we're medium. So just like that, our avatar is now using the haptics without actually having our performance rating utterly destroyed. So if you wanted to put this down to a good, and I cannot possibly see you ever going down to excellent with only eight contact nodes, that prefab editor is where you would do it, and you'd simply just remove more nodes the same way we've been doing. You'd probably want to work out your own optimal pattern for what nodes you can miss without losing too much. But for me personally, I'm going to stay like this. I've showed you how to do it though, and now the freedom to choose belongs to you. So the touch feedback points actually are linked to the nodes once you're in the game. So there will be some minor sort of gaps in your touch feedback area that won't visually trigger because they're not actually going to visually trigger. With my setup, I don't think it's too obvious. But you can just disable these by just deleting them in the prefab editor if you don't like these. First thing I do, I think it's nice to have the other people see what you're feeling, but it's up to you. You can be stealthy if you like. You can keep the vests on if you like, etc. Whatever you want to do, it's really not that tricky. Once you've decided that, then you just build and publish the avatar the same as you always would. All right, and that, I would say, concludes this brief little tutorial to how to actually have be haptics on your VR chat avatar without your performance being nuked. Oh yes, what I was meaning to say, but I forgot to, is you can now see why we don't want to necessarily add more than the vest. We still have that contact component count to deal with. So if you add in arms and its motors, say the tact visor or hands and feet, we now have to find room for all of those in our component count and that can be quite challenging as we're really not given very much to work with here without destroying our overall performance. Which is a bit sad because I really wonder how hard these contact components really are in performance given that the rest of the avatar, at least in this example, is excellent. So that's a bit of a shame, but it's something we have to live with. If you want say, to really do that, you'll just have to remove more nodes from the main vest and then choose which ones you want to activate on your additional peripherals. All right, that's it. Lads, lovelies, everyone in between. Thanks for tuning in to Jane James VR. I hope you found this useful. Please consider liking, subscribing, sharing this content, all the usual, you know, stuff. And thanks for coming. Bye-bye.